Any, is uh, volume levels okay for everybody? Is Because it seems like Tara might be a bit louder than I am. What else is new? I'm from Long Island. I can't help it. I don't mean you, you. I mean like your, your connection on the, the mixer board. <sighs> oh, well. See, this is what happens. I try to do something nice for the show, and I try and upgrade, and the technology just goes fucking haywire. I just want my show to look and sound good. Is that too much to ask? Oh, well. So how was your... Well, I mean, if you want to die, you can get a different sidekick. No, it's not. If only we could wean you, you off. Want to... If you wanted good looks and professionalism, you'd hire somebody else. If only we could just wean you off of Macintosh. No. <laughs> don't sure hear you. I love her. All right. you, I thought for a second you deleted my wallpaper. I have this enormous picture of David Wright as my wallpaper, and for a minute it went all blue, and I was going to kill you. No, that's what happens when you remote into someone else's computer. It, I was going to seriously hurt you. I, I did not. I did not. Go away. I did not. How could I didn't? You didn't. You went into my system preps. That's where you set the wallpaper on a Mac. Uh, we were pretty well, close to having some issues. Well, we've it's it's functioning now. So I suppose we should start the nonsense before everybody loses their shit at us. Shall we? Yeah, before the natives get their torches. Sorry. Okay. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back their privileges that we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Yeah, this was just uh, July uh, 4th Crazy. weekend. Just passed. Did you have the wonderful experience of all your neighbors setting off fucking borders in your neighborhood? Well, no. One, because I spent July 4th not at home and two because i live in like super duper preppyville they don't really do that around here they do it here it sounds like fucking world war yeah, ii no. i live i live in like stepford kind of these days and they don't really go in for that sort of thing around here here it was like the goddamn battle of the fucking bulge outside <laughs> what was cool though was i was at a, a friend's apartment in the city and he had a view over the river, so we could see like six different fireworks shows going on in New Jersey at the same time, which was cool. So I take it now you and your friend know what fireworks look like. In fact, most people over the age of five should know what fireworks look like, correct? I was already aware of what fireworks look like, yes. Well, apparently, whoever is running American Apparel's um, uh, social media does not. Because they need the bad press right now. Americans they just fired their own CEO for fucking the models, and they need the bad press so bad right now. American Apparel issues apology after posting picture of Challenger explosion as <laughs> fireworks. Really? Yes, it's that picture. One of the most iconic pictures in American history of 1986. It was 86, wasn't it? 86, 86. 86 when the Challenger. So. Yeah. American Apparel issued a public apology Thursday after the company posted a picture of the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster to its Tumblr page. It was fireworks. Los Angeles Times reports the company said it was an honest, honest mistake by a young social media employee who was born after the 1986 explosion that killed all seven crew members. See, this is what I was about to say. I don't fucking care if you were born after, because half of our viewers were born after. God right. help us. We could be their parents. Okay. That doesn't look like fireworks. No! For Christ's sakes, I was born long after the fucking Hindenburg exploding. You know what? If I saw a, ball, a picture of the Hindenburg, I'd know it was a fucking Hindenburg exploding and not a goddamn firework! Like, I, 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 I get that your media intern is probably, like, 19. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't look like fireworks. It doesn't look festive. It looks like an air disaster. Yes! It yes! Because what the shit? Yeah, everybody's in the channel is going, I was born after that and I know this. It is one of the... This isn't the fact that your media intern is young. It's that your media intern's a fucking idiot. Why is it whenever corporations try to use social media, 
This keeps happening. I don't know, but they should they should stop, man. Because I, I, you know, we social media is not meant to advertise or promote a company. Because this shit keeps happening. Social media does not understand. And because you can interact with it. Like, it's a little freaky now that you can't tweet about a company without some poor yokel immediately responding. Like, how can I help you today? We don't want your fucking help. I'm so bitching like, about your company. I, I, don't, I don't know if you got you have this where you are. There's a there's a charity called Cars for Kids, K-A-R-S, and they have the most annoying jingle in the world. They play the, they play the commercials on all the sports radio networks around here. And like most of the news networks. So you hear this jingle about 62 times a day. It's and it's like iconically bad now. Like it's come back around where like it's the big joke that, oh my God, that fucking cards for kids jingle. It's terrible. And I tweeted one day, like, that's the worst jingle ever. And immediately someone from Cards for Kids got back to me and was like, Yeah, we know, but everybody knows it now. And and then I felt so bad. I'm like, oh my God. It would be like if you were at the mall and you bought a Coke and you taste it and goes, you know what? I really don't like the way Coke tastes. And someone from Coke just appeared around the corner and goes, hi, how can I help you? Would you like a free Coke? Would you like a free? No, (laughs) fuck off. And and I felt so bad because I had made fun of a fucking charity. um, And then like they knew. I was like, man, I'm a bad person. And luckily their social media intern took it in good stride because they know that jingle fucking sucks. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, well, you know, it's what we're known for now. I'm just like, man, eh, all right, good, good work with the cards for kids thing. You know, and what, what uh, funnily you, enough. You should be able to bitch about things without having to answer for them, for God's sake. You should be able to complain about bad service at Starbucks without the official Starbucks account coming back to give you shit about it. I will say, though, that this appears to have gone better than Robin Thicke's experience on Twitter this week. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah when, you, when, you, when, you write, when you write a rape anthem, probably Twitter is not where you should go to get feedback. He wrote a whole stalker album. I know. This is the album I wrote about stalking my ex-wife, who I also cheated on. Hitting me, America. Like, stop it! Well, do you, at best, at best, it's pathetic and undignified. At best, and that's your best case scenario by a country mile. So we have more Fourth of July stuff. Not fireworks, but it's going to make you very angry. I can tell you already. It's it's going to make you very angry. I'm already angry that you mocked me. You mock me. Uh, yes, but when you're able to defend yourself, how do you say that with a strict face? I don't mock you when you're defenseless. Well, speaking of defenseless, because, yeah, this is definitely going to piss you off. It pissed me off. Um, July 4th festivities from Minnesota. Sounds like it'd be a fun day out on the lake with the family. And, well, it was a day on the lake with the family, at least. Boat chase suspect used baby as pepper spray shield. Baby's fine. The baby's fine. Minnesota man used a nine-month-year-old baby. Nine-month-year. Nine-month-old baby as a human shield when Water Patrol officers tried to pepper spray him. Fourth of July boat chase on Lake Minnetonka. Wow, I know how to say that. According to charges filed Monday. Ryan David Kruger. We're already off to a great start with the name there. 33. I wonder why he has trouble with children. (laughs) Is charged Nobody with, with that name. I mean, maybe that's really horribly generalist, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't let them around your kids, especially if they don't clip their nails. He's charged with uh, driving while intoxicated, I guess boating while intoxicated, fleeing police, terroristic threats, and child endangerment for the boat chase on Crystal Bay, an incident that started with a domestic dispute <laughs> that sent the baby's mother overboard. Charges. Hennepin County Water Patrol officer sparred the boat, driving erratically and circling a water a woman in the water, creating a heavy wake that violated the high water declaration. When the officers approached the boat around 8.30 p.m., they found a baby with no life jacket sitting in Kruger's lap. They also found the child's mother, Jamie Schweenis? Schneewis? Schneewis. 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 Had jumped, okay. in, had jumped out of the boat to get away from Kruger, 
Both Kruger and Schneeweiss appeared to be drunk. Schneeweiss talked to police. Kruger started to slowly drive away in his boat. One uh, Water Patrol officers yelled for him to stop. I like that. He's like, well, they're not going to notice if I just <laughs> happen to take on off. When Water Patrol officers yelled for him to stop, he said, fuck you, and continued to pull away. All right. You know the only time I've ever done that? Is playing Watch Dogs. It's a video game. Oh. And in the game, the police will tell you to pull over, and I have out loud told them, no, you pull over. Yeah, I've never done that, ever. Kruger sped off, continued driving in a manner to elude police. How, that's the other thing. How do you elude police on a lake? There's not a lot of... Where are you going, buddy? There's not a lot of cover. There's no place to, there's no corners to duck around. There's no Mm -hmm. back alleys. When officers tried to board the boat and grab Kruger, he threw punches at them. They attempted to pepper spray Kruger, but he grabbed the baby and used it as a human shield, then pushed the throttle forward and sped away a second time. Okay. I... Can you imagine this drunk that makes that okay? This kid in 18 years. He's you know what? He he would grow in a perfect world. He would grow up to be Batman. Just some sort of. I don't think this really equates to having your parents murdered in front of you outside the opera when you're 12. No, but there's still pretty crap thing to have happened to you. But I don't think it's like Batman pathos creating level of crap. Like, the kid's not even going to remember this ever happened. <laughs> no, he's going to remember because every year at Christmas, his mother, the guy's mother-in-law is going to say, do you remember your time your daddy tried to use you as a human shield? Well, I do. I've got the newspaper clipping right here. It doesn't, it doesn't say in the story that the child is his. It actually talks very carefully around that. Well, that's even fucking worse. It says that the woman was the child's mother, but True. it very pointedly does not say that he is the father. He ain't that baby daddy. <laughs> and I'm thinking he's probably not dating mommy anymore. Probably not. Holy shit. You use my infant as a human shield, you're so good. When you try to jump, when you gotta jump out the boat, that, that relationship's over. That, that's, that's way beyond pull over and let me out and you're at the, in the interstate in the middle of nowhere at 2 a.m. That's way past that, because you're, you're like, I'm getting out the boat. No, because if they were only in a lake, I actually think the interstate thing is beyond this, because they're only in a lake. If they were, like, out in the open ocean, it'd be worse, but, like, it's a lake. Okay, D.A. Scott, this kid will be emotionally scarred and grow up to be Batman's greatest villain, Dr. Pepper. ha <laughs> Anyway, um, I just got still showing you all her butt. Yes. I just got back from Manchester and I I like the UK. It's a lovely place. Manchester in particular is a lovely place. And and I would love to have wonderful things to say about it. But unfortunately, the story showed up and I'm going to use it. And my girlfriend's going to be mad. I have a wonderful thing to say about Manchester. What? Charlie from Moss was from Manchester. But, um, well, you know, actually, this is something Charlie from Moss would do. Um, driver refused, arrested after refusing to give breath tests because, quote, she's too busy drinking. Points for honesty. <laughs> she didn't lie. Uh, a motorway police tracked down a woman who fled pub, pub after collision with two other vehicles. The driver fled to a pub following the crash. She was arrested for refusing a breath test as she was too busy drinking. The woman had been driving. Uh, uh, I can't pronounce that car name. Peugeot. Peugeot? Seriously? I can't. Peugeot. You ever heard of a Peugeot? No. It's a sports car. She was driving involved in a collision in Oldham, which is actually where my girlfriend lives. So this is like really narrowed down. Officers. Cat. No. No, she doesn't do that. Because she doesn't drive that kind of car. She drives a Nissan. You know, or, or a Nissan. They call it like a Nissan. I, I'm not kidding. In England, they call a Nissan a Nissan. Well, yeah, they also say aluminium. 
Officers call at 12.45 p.m. I found the woman at 12.45 p.m. I want to stress that. This is the middle of the fucking day. This is lunchtime. Found the woman to left the scene of the incident, gone to a nearby pub. They caught up with her and she was arrested. Okay. Really, the first thing you're going to do after getting in a collision with two other fucking cars is go and, and, and have a pint. Really, that, that's, that's your afternoon. <laughs> Arietta, no ma'am, I do not want a beer. No ma'am, I don't think you should have another one either. I'm glad, I'm glad you love me. Thank you. Uh, of all the now, the only thing that could possibly be going through my head as as what her her cunning plan was, she's already drunk, right? But they can't prove she was drunk while she was driving. So her plan was to immediately go to a pub and drink as much as possible there, so she can say, "No, I wasn't drunk then, but I'm drunk now." You see. I, I was you the whole time. <laughs> I was right here the whole time. <laughs> no, it, it, it's a tr- I, it's kind of clever in a stupid way. It, she's saying, no, I wasn't drunk when I was driving the car. Yeah, sure, I hit people. But no, now I'm drunk. So if I take. And I was so traumatized by that that I right. immediately had to go and get drunk. Right. So they can't prove I was driving drunk. Because, yeah, it's, it's, oh, God. It's, it's, I mean, for a drunken plan, it's kind of ingenious. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I mean, the extent of a drunken plan is usually maybe if I hide under the dashboard, they won't see me. <laughs> I did have another. Yeah, I sound drunk a bit too well. I did have a story I didn't use this week. The guy's excuse. How do you think I get through this bit? I didn't have a story I didn't use this week. The guy was at a store, very drunk, and he tried to tell the officers the dog drove. <laughs> well, well, it's time to move on to Arizona, which is becoming the new Florida. Orange is the blue, new black. Arizona is the new Florida. We don't need a new Florida. The old one still works. It still works just fine. It's doing its job way too well. Um, so I do you remember when the uh, what was it the Packard? I, I want to call it um, that. Uh, it's kind of like a half minivan. Looks with the old styling. Is that the vehicle I'm thinking of? I don't know. My car knowledge ended for the night at Pujo. Maybe someone in the channel will uh, will. Well, no, but it's it's one of the it's they've had a bunch of these new cars now that look a little we've got kind of the old stylings or unusual stylings. And I thought they were really cool. But this guy didn't think they were cool. He thought something else entirely. Arizona man arrested after mistaking car for alien spaceship. PT Cruiser. Oh. That's the one. That's the one. Well, this isn't a PT oh, Cruiser. Oh, I love the PT Cruiser, but that doesn't look anything like a minivan. Well, it's it's kind of it's well, it's kind of like you know got the back on it, but anyway. An Arizona man was arrested after police say he followed a couple around town, harassing and threatening them because he thought the car was a spaceship and the driver was an alien. The driver of the car was nervous enough to call police and feel threatened to the point he considered. The concealed weapon he had with him, which is something that's an don't fuck with people in in the blue in the blue states because they will shoot you now. Red um, states, red states, yeah, blue states where we're cool. Red, right? Red states, they'll fucking shoot you. Man in custody was forty four year old James Bushhart. Uh, when police stopped him. He was found with a meth with meth, a pipe used to smoke meth, and he was charged with DWI and disorderly sort of conduct. According to police report, the officer conducted the traffic stop. Uh, um, had field sobriety test uh, said he was shaky and talking throughout as Bushart followed uh, him and his girlfriend followed uh, the victim Jay Ward and his girlfriend around town is that thunder? yeah wow 
At one point, pulling in front of them at a stop, all the while making threatening gestures and demanding, quote, the alien take his spaceship and go back where they came from. Okay, in Arizona, first thing I thought when I was reading this story. Yeah. Was they was he meant an entirely different kind of alien, which if it's Arizona. It's an immigration thing. If it's Arizona having a bastard yelling at you and telling you to go back where you came from, that's kind of a normal thing in Arizona these days. But yeah. this is not. Further, according to the police report, Bushart claimed he was curious about the car because, quote, it looked like a futuristic machine. This does. All right. This next sentence does not make any fucking sense to me. Maybe it will to you. At one point, he told police that, quote, he was a very big deal and had 1,000, 100,000 Asian flowers. Oh. Well, good for him. I'm trying to find the relevancy. And I'm not. Maybe the kind of Asian flowers he has are particularly good for fighting aliens. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you suspect that space aliens are cruising about your town, you don't know their intentions. They could be the Independence Day aliens. They could be the Mars Attacks aliens. They could be the alien aliens. We don't chase them down and confront them alone. If it, dude, if I saw fucking aliens tooling around town, I ain't gonna go have a conversation. I'm gonna take as much fucking video as I can, and I am going to win YouTube. Because if you, I mean, you could get like face hugger raped in the face. Yeah, you could. And nobody wants that. Or you could get anal probe like Cartman and have a satellite dish growing out of your ass, and nobody wants that either. You now you say that. Tara, yes. really, really, this is with, with seeing with all the certainty with all the shit we've seen on this show. I'm fairly certain nobody wants a full size satellite dish growing out of their ass. You, right now, there is some guy in bumfuck North Dakota going, I do. It might only be one guy, but there is one guy. I refuse to believe that. This next one actually strikes a little close to home for me and the other internet video people. Okay. We have, when we make videos, um, our, our scripted stuff, and we go out on location, we have to be really careful, really careful, and really mindful of other people. The best thing we can hope for is to get our own closed space where no one else can wander in. But if you are in public, you have to realize People are going to see you, and they're not going to understand, even though YouTube has been around forever, and people do stupid shit on YouTube. And if I see someone doing stupid, you know, stupid shit in a costume in public, my first thought is, oh, he's doing something on YouTube. However, people... My first thought is they're LARPing. That too. That too. Which we've also had problems with that, if, you, if you've ever LARPed in a public place. And, there, and we will note, our game doesn't allow us, or... Didn't, I don't know if it's changed, didn't allow us to use weapon props. Nothing to look like a, wheel, a real weapon. Reason for that. This is the fucking reason. Stormtrooper prompts lockdown at Kansas business. And yes, they mean an actual guy in a stormtrooper outfit. Uh, Selena, Kansas. Maybe he thought he found the... Oh, okay, all right, stop. Ben Bradley, you wrote this story. Stop. Stop right now. And people are wondering why. His first line is, maybe he found the droids he was looking for. You go stand... Ben Bradley, you're bad and you should feel bad. Ben Bradley, you go stand in the corner and think about what you've done. Stand in the corner... Think about what you've done! Adam Crow says, why? Stormtroopers aren't a threat. They can't hit anything. <laughs> valid point. That is a valid fucking point. In any case, a man dressed as a quote. I love how he puts Star Wars. He puts Star Wars in quotes. He's like, Star Wars, Stormtrooper. This well, guy is so yeah, not a geek. It's a proper name. Technically, you should italicize it, but if you don't have the italic option, you put it in quotes. It's a computer. He's got the fucking... 
That's Fair. just the, that's just MFA style or AP style rather. As a stormtrooper caused a brief lockdown, uh, news reports that uh, officers were dispatched to the report of a possibly armed man. An area business owner, another man, were working when they noticed the trooper outside carrying a gun. One of the men thought he may have been carrying an AK-47. Turns out there was no danger. A man was visiting an attorney's office nearby while his stormtrooper friend was outside shooting a video for a website. He was carrying a plastic gun. What? Yeah, I know. Okay, dude, I gotta go visit my lawyer today. Why don't you put on the stormtrooper outfit and come with me and shoot a video while I do that? What? <laughs> Is up nothing. I I just I'm more confused now. I know. Okay, every I I'm I'm gonna just stop and say everybody here is an idiot. Everyone here is an idiot. First off, understand that that of the people you meet, many of them will be idiots. Every day. You, These are the idiots in your neighborhood. Every day, in your neighborhood. out and about, walking around in the mall, you know, driving, definitely driving, you are going to encounter idiots, and they're not going to understand things. They're not going idiots. to... Un- idiots can happen to you at any time. They're not going to understand that you have a plastic gun and you're shooting a video for YouTube in a Stormtrooper outfit. You have to be aware of this. You can't do Ooh. these sort of things because you will scare the straights. Where was the camera? Shouldn't there have been someone with him operating the camera? No, I can tell you from experience. Most of us have to do this shit all by ourselves. We set stuff up on a tripod and shoot. No. No, all right. I guess that makes sense. We don't have people to help us. But the other thing is, all right, really honestly, you think that you think that Al Qaeda has stormtroopers now, people? Really? That's your first... The first thing that goes through your head is, oh shit, I'm going to die when you see a stormtrooper. I don't know if I would say Al-Qaeda, but this, I mean, there. I feel like there's probably some crossover between Star Wars nerds and redneck gun nuts. <laughs> God help us. So maybe not like an Al-Qaeda type, but maybe like a whacked out Timothy McVeigh type, that that's the only type of armor they could easily get their hands on it's made of plastic. Or they thought it was awesome. Uh, it has that armor has more chance of that armor couldn't stop an infection, much less a bullet. I'm just saying, there's more than one kinds of terrorism. Crazy white guy terrorism is a thing, and crazy white guys love Star Wars. Yeah, I know. It's it's a this is a bad climate to be going out. There's bound to be a crossover in that Venn diagram. Is all I'm saying. You know, now that I'm stopping to think about it, some we have people going out with real guns, being idiots and assholes just because they can. This is a bad climate to go out with a fake gun. Yeah. Don't believe me. Ask Tari. Really, just don't be an asshole just because you can. Thank you for the segue. Again. Again. The worst superpower. Why can't I read lines? I have, my bank is Wells Fargo, and I hate my bank. Do, do you, wh- wh- who's yours? Or do you want to say? I'm not giving out any more personal information. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I can ask you this. Do you hate your bank? Not particularly. I have an entirely online account, so I don't really ever have to deal with people. It's fair enough. I just, I, I hate the hidden fees and the bullshit and the pride. You know, it, and trying to talk to someone in the bank tends to become a bit of a, whenever there's a problem, it's a headache in and of itself. So I, I can understand the motivation here, but I sure as hell can't understand the end result, such as it were, and that's not a pun, but oh god, it could be. Man walks calmly into bank and relieves himself on floor several times. Huh. And when they say relieved himself, no, they don't mean number one. Staff shut the Barclays in Andover, uh, this is Massachusetts, uh, Haints, while 
The mess was cleaned up after a, quote, bald middle-aged man in his 40s walked in and made special deposits. I'm not, should I be angry about that one or not? Yes. Man walked into a bank and defecated out of his shorts several times. Now that is actually kind of impressing me. Yeah. Like, how much fiber did you eat before <laughs> pulling off this little protest? That's a lot of poop. That is a lot of poop. Um, customer Gareth McCarthy uh, said, yeah, he was said to be, uh, said, I was just queuing up and there were a dozen customers there and this guy walked in, looked pretty well to do, middle aged his 40s, wearing shorts and trainers, had a bald head. He didn't say anything at all, but you can tell him his face, he looked angry. Did he look angry though? I really just like to me British because queuing and trainers yeah. are not Massachusetts slang. <laughs> Staff shut the Barclays while the mess was cleaned up. Uh, Gareth added, I wasn't really paying attention until I noticed a foul, unmistakable sp- smell. I looked at the guy, and he just calmly walked around the bank, going to all the areas he could, quite clear what he was doing. He had a calm but angry look on his face as he walked around, leaving special spots on the floor. And as calmly as he walked in, he left. Huh. You go, okay, you go to, bank, to a bank to ask for a loan, not a load. That was bad, Bubba. Bubba channel said that one. What does your bank have to do to make you do that? <laughs> I... <laughs> Reverend Mal, I wanted to put a thousand bucks in my bank, but I accidentally swallowed it. Give me a minute and I'll get it back out for you. Like, I, I don't understand how you get to this point. <laughs> Well, this seems like the best way to deal with your situation. I'm just stunned at the bowel control on this guy. To be able to calmly go from place to place, leaving several turds in coordinated, you know, not just one pile. No, no, it was thwomp, thwomp, thwomp. We left them all around the bank. That is some determined pooping. It's starting to gross me out thinking about it. There are better ways to protest, for God's sake. There are many better ways to protest. Most of them don't involve poop. Yeah, none of them involve poop. Well, unless you're protesting poop. Otherwise, none of them involve poop. Why would you protest poop? I don't know. Kind of a necessary evil. Maybe some people just don't like poop. I inadvertently taught my nephew at age four that everybody poops. Wait a minute. We doing, In, inadvertently? We were, we, we were doing a dinosaur puzzle because when he was really little, I used to come over and babysit and we'd do puzzles. And I asked him to hand me a particular piece and he said, which piece? And I said, the one with the dinosaur's butt on it. And he cracked a glass and said, Aunt Tara, dinosaurs don't have a butt. And I said, yes, they do. Where do you think they poop out of? And he says, dinosaurs don't poop. And I said, Patrick, everything poops. And this was a revelation. <laughs> And then when my sister came home, he said, Mommy, did you know that everything poops? <laughs> and she glared at me <laughs> in a way that only a mother of a small child can. And I was like, listen, what was I supposed to do? Lie to him? Oh. He, you know, it came up. What was I going to do? I had to tell the truth. Everything poops. You know, honestly, my first response would not be to, I would go to the Better Business Bureau. Not poop. Yeah. Yo, know, I, I want results. Because now, now you're probably going to jail for at least the night where you're really not going to like the customer service. That, there, there, there are many places in life you don't fuck around. The airport, you don't fuck around. You don't fuck around. In a police station, don't fuck around. And a bank, you certainly don't fuck around. No, they take that shit serious. Because that's where they keep the money, and they know people want the money. And they're always curious when someone comes in and starts fucking around, and they're thinking, do they want the money? Yeah. So, I mean, although to be honest, I, I'd be hard-pressed to think of this as any type of a robbery. Although, this would be the best thing ever if his friends had all, like, 
got together and said, okay, here's how it's all going to do. And they did this Ocean 11 thing, Ocean's 11 type thing, and told him, all right, your part of the plan is you're the distraction. I want you to go in there and poop all over the place. Really? That's what? Yeah. Go in there and poop. And while they're dealing with the poop, we'll go in and get the money. I don't know about this, guys. Trust me. You'll get the money. Go and poop. Okay. That's probably why he was looking calm but angry. He's like, I'm going to get this money. I'm a badass. If anybody, let me just throw a piece of unsolicited advice out there for all of you. If any of your friends ever sell that to you as a plan, make new friends. Yeah, if any of your friends ever tell you to go somewhere and poop and it's not the bathroom. It's either they're pranking you or that's really their plan and that's worse. <laughs> Because that's not a very, that's not a good plan. As Ooh, it's not a plan. <laughs> the things we have we have come up with on this show that is now that it, that's going to follow me until I die. We should make bumper stickers. Poop is not a plan. Yeah. No one wants to see your dick. There's nothing sexy at the Walmart. Poop is not a plan. So I guess that, well, that's the, yet again, that's the first thing we've learned this week. Poop is not a plan. If you, you shouldn't have to keep learning that. If you do have a problem with your local bank, go to the Chamber of Commerce, not the Chamber Pot. Uh, we've learned that if you're, that it's fun to do this sort of video stuff, but keep in mind, other people are stupid and will take it the wrong way. And they they will really believe stormtroopers have come to Earth with guns. Or that some psycho dressed up in stormtrooper armor and is going to shoot up his job. True. But that shit's plausible. That is plausible, but, you know, sadly enough, we've determined... We, we had a story, another story that proved it's just as likely someone thought he was an alien. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is Don't confront aliens on the street. On the off chance, you are certain, dead certain, that you are dealing with a being from another world. Find a law enforcement officer. Do not approach the alien. Just at least find backup. Get a first contact, buddy. You're not trained at this shit. You're not. You're. You're. you're you are not setting. I, I, I don't think your local PD is trained for it either. Fair, but at least they have guns. Yeah, um, true. We've learned that the worst thing you can do besides leaving the scene of an accident is leaving a scene of an accident and continue to get drunk. That's not helping your case. You're going to leave the scene of an accident. Don't then park in any public place, let alone the local pub. Excuse me, ma'am. Would you mind taking this breathalyzer? Hmm. All right. All right. Excuse me. Here. Here. But I'm telling you, as drunk plans go, that's pretty goddamn good, right? It, yeah, I mean, it, it, it points for, you know, ex at least having a, a series of events in mind that would just not a really good plausible. She had a phase two. Sometimes as good, when you're drunk, plans seem fantastic, but when you become sober, you realize how really bad they were. Yeah. And speaking of that, probably... The response when attempt when the police are attempting to stop you should not be your response should be yes officer not fuck you. I'm pretty sure the moment you say fuck you to any sort of law enforcement agent is the point where you lose. Yeah, it's kind of like there's certain things that will get you ejected from a major league baseball game. One of the big ones, like, there's certain buzzwords that everybody knows will get you injected from the game. You call the ref, the umpire, a cocksucker, you're getting kicked the fuck out of that game. That's a one-way ticket out of the game. Like, and everybody just knows that. It's an unwritten rule of baseball. You don't use that word. It's kind of the same thing. The second you're throwing F-bombs at the cops, you can just say hello to your night in the drunk tank. Yeah, it... This is one of those moments you should take stock. If you're drunk in a boat, you've got a baby on your lap, and your girl, the baby's mother 
is in the water attempting to get away from you while the cops are closing in on you. That's one of those moments. That, that's what we call a wake up call. Yeah, that that's that's when you should be going. I need to reevaluate some shit. Something might have gotten wrong, gone wrong in my life. Finally, we've learned corporations should not use social media. You just shouldn't. Guys, you're bad at it. This is becoming a new thing on my When I notice whenever something becomes a new thing on the show, when we keep getting the same type of story over and over, it's kind of reinforcing some shit. And this is one corporations. Twitter is not good for you. We should write a book of all our little rules for living. I, we should. We should totally write a book. The what the fuck is wrong with you guide to existing in society? <laughs> if you're a business, Twitter is just not that into you. It's no. just not. You should. Mm-hmm. We also learned that you're a big knee jerk who mocks me when I can't defend myself. Like, you've never mocked me. Not when you're defenseless, damn it. How are you defenseless? You had a keyboard? I couldn't hear you, and you were controlling my computer. Briefly. I didn't even know what you were saying about me. I had to rely on the internet to tell me. Well, they did tell you. Oh. I bring the kitty. 